push away from the table. In this video, I'm going to show you how to stop eating once you've started. If you want to control what you eat, control your body, and control your life, then hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video. I remember reading some anorexic blogs back in the day. I remember one of the things they said was, if I eat anything, I'll eat everything, so I eat nothing. That was justification for not eating anything, and it was an excuse to be orthorexic or even anorexic. What that statement implies is that binging is destiny, that once you start, you have no control, and that once you start eating, then you're definitely going to binge, and there's no choice about it. So you might as well just not eat anything. This is not true. You actually have a lot more control than you think. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to stop the process of eating without feeling deprived and without that compulsion to binge. I can't tell you how many parties, social events, and trips to the restaurant have been completely ruined because I couldn't control what I ate. I overate everything. I would eat too many chips. And you will enjoy those kind of events much more when you learn how to control your appetite. You eat according to appetite and you only need what you need. You'll enjoy those social events a lot more when you learn to control what you eat, control cravings, and you only eat what you want. The first step is to be self-aware. I know there it is, self-awareness once again. Self-awareness is the big theme of this channel. It's knowing what you're doing and why you're doing it. You need to be self-aware of what you're feeling and what your hunger is and what your hunger is telling you. You would be surprised how little you actually need to eat to satiate hunger. I used to think that I needed to consume all of these calories and a mountain of food just to satiate hunger. My hunger mechanism wasn't working, so I had to binge just to satisfy it. If I didn't binge, then I would be starving. Then I realized that I really didn't need a lot of food. Now, the only way I was able to discover that was by connecting with my hunger and actually listening to my hunger. Remember, the definition of an eating disorder is eating not according to hunger. You deliberately ignore those internal cues. You don't pay attention to hunger. You don't pay attention to anything, really. You're just responding to those primordial urges to make you consume everything because it thinks you need all that to survive. The next time you're eating, I highly encourage you to pay attention to your hunger. How hungry are you really? Do you need that extra dessert? Do you need that extra portion? Do you need to go back and get seconds? When I started paying attention to hunger more and I started eating according to hunger, that's when I started to make a lot of gains. My second tip is to eat without distractions. At least once a day, I highly encourage you to eat something, even if it's just a minute or two, without any external stimuli. That means no phone, no computer, no work, no magazine, no book, no nothing. Just don't consume anything else while you're eating something. Even if you're just eating like an energy bar or something really light or some kind of snack, just eat it without distracting yourself. Just this once, see how it goes. I remember when I was a binge eater, I always had to have some distraction in front of me. It was usually some YouTube channel that was in my recommended list that I really didn't plan to watch, but then I started watching it or I was reading news articles or blogs. Those are always my favorite. Of course, I wasn't really learning anything because I was scanning everything. I wasn't going in depth, but I always had to distract myself. And I think that's part of the problem. We live in a distracted age. We're constantly checking email, doing work, doing this, doing that. And we never take the time to just eat for the sake of eating. It's almost like eating is a waste of time and we have to do something else to make it worth our time. You don't have to eat without distraction all the time. You don't have to light candles and sit cross-legged every time you sit down to eat that would be ideal but it's just not possible i just encourage everybody to sit down once a day eat something and really pay attention to the food my third tip for you is to do something fun after you eat i think part of the reason i ate so much sometimes is because i was procrastinating there was something i didn't want to do something i wasn't looking forward to so i just ate and ate to kind of suppress those feelings a little bit to make it a little better but of course i never felt better i just felt worse afterwards and then I made that task even worse. Let's say it's the last meal of the day and you realize that you're not gonna eat for another 12, 16, maybe even 18 hours, or maybe you're gonna fast the whole day yesterday. It's really tempting to eat a lot at that point because you're gonna go a while without eating, at least you think so. Plan something that you really wanna do after that. Maybe check your email, maybe listen to some music, maybe watch a movie. Do something that you've been looking forward to all day and tell yourself that you can only do it after you eat. Another thing you can do is take a nice hot shower that you've been looking forward to, get, uh, get clean again. Maybe you've had a long day and you're sweaty. One thing I would do is I would watch the videos in my watch later folder of YouTube. I love YouTube. That's why I'm always talking about it and that's why I'm on YouTube. But I would tell myself that I would only watch those videos 
uh, once I finished eating. I, I couldn't watch it. The worst thing you can do is do something really hard or really tedious or something you don't want to do after you eat because then you're just going to be compelled to eat more and more and delay whatever it is that you don't want to do. My next tip, this is more a hack, but have something that's flavored after you eat. I'm not talking about dessert. I'm not talking about key lime pie or something like that. You can do that once in a while. Uh, what I'm talking about is having some flavored water, maybe some coffee, maybe um, a protein shake, maybe some tea with a little bit of sugar. It's a good way to kind of land safely. You don't want to be binging one minute and then crash and go to nothing. That's what I was doing for many years of my life. And it was just binge, purge, fast cycle over and over again. What I find effective is having something small and something that you can sip right after eating. And then you don't have to tell yourself, okay, it's nothing after this, this is my last bite. At least I can have a little bit of tea after this or I can have that protein shake or I can have some vanilla almond milk, whatever it is that, that you like. My point is don't go from eating the most delicious meal to nothing in one moment. That actually encourages you to eat more. My next tip is to remember how it feels after you binge. You know, after you binge, it really sucks. You have all of this crap in your stomach and in your intestines, and you probably feel bloated and terrible about yourself. Uh, maybe it's so bad, like in my cases, that you actually can't lie down and go to bed. You have to pace back and forth uh, just so you can have enough time to digest things and then go to bed. I remember doing that several times. And the next time I had that temptation to binge, I just remembered that. Remember how bad it felt, Kevin? It feels really bad. You feel bad psychologically, but you also feel bad physically. The physical effects of binging are almost as bad as the psychological, although I still think the psychological effects are, are worse. You're talking about bad self-esteem, bad body image, bad outlook on life in general. But the physical effects are real. And the next time you have that urge or that craving, just remember how bad it felt the last time. My next tip for you is to tell yourself that you're gonna weigh yourself the next morning. Weighing yourself is actually a healthy behavior. I used to be against weighing myself because I felt like, oh, that's what I did when I was orthorexic and I was obsessed and I didn't, um, didn't want to gain weight and I was obsessed about my body image. I actually think weighing yourself once or twice a week, especially, especially after a binge, is a good way to keep yourself accountable because then you have to see the number, you have to see the damage, and then you think, oh my gosh, why was I, why did I do that? Tell yourself that you're going to weigh yourself a day after you fast or a day after you binge. Those are really good times to weigh yourself. Maybe the next time you won't think about it because the number will be so high that you won't want to do it. On days that I did that, I actually ate less because I wanted that number to go down again. Of course, it went down again and then I repeated the process, but hey, one day is good, right? My next tip for you is to savor the first and last bites. The first and last bites are usually the best, right? Especially that first bite, you're really hungry, you're looking forward to that meal and you have that, that hit of salt, sugar, fat, whatever it is, or maybe it's something really healthy. It still tastes great um, when you haven't eaten anything in several hours and you feel like you need to eat something. That first bite's the best. First bite is the best, second bite is the second best, and then everything else in between is forgettable. You don't really remember the fifth bite, the sixth bite, the seventh bite. Just keep that in mind. When I was binging and overeating, I never really paid attention to what I was actually eating. I was just on autopilot. And I remember thinking, I'm not really enjoying this. I, I look forward to it. I, I get that anticipation, that excitement, like this is gonna feel really good. I can't wait to do this. But then when I was actually doing it, I realized it wasn't really doing anything for me. It was like, am I even paying attention to this? Am I even tasting it? The answer was no, I wasn't even tasting it. And the reason why I wasn't tasting it is because I was eating so fast. I didn't really have time to pay attention. Didn't have time to pay attention to my hunger. Didn't have time to pay attention to the texture. Didn't have time to pay attention to the color and the mouthfeel and how it made me feel in the moment. So it's kind of the worst of both worlds. You're consuming all this crap and then you have to get rid of it somehow and you're not really enjoying the moment. The reason why is because you can only enjoy so many bites. Next time you have cheesecake or carrot cake or apple pie or ice cream or whatever, just pay attention to that. Rate each bite. What is each bite doing for you? That first bite's gonna be the best, I guarantee it. Then the second bite is a little less and then a little less and then a little less and then a little less. One trick that I used on myself was I pretended like I was only gonna eat two bites of something really delicious. I was only gonna eat the first bite and the last bite and then I pretended like everything else didn't exist. My next tip for you is to set the timer for 20 or 30 minutes. So after you're done eating, go do some menial tasks that don't require a lot of thought, like checking email, checking this, checking that, reading the news, taking a shower, brushing your teeth. Before you know it, 20 or 30 minutes have gone by and you didn't even notice. And you know what? You're probably not even that hungry at that point. You think you want all this extra food right after you finish a meal, but then if you just wait 20 or 30 minutes and you wait for your brain to register um, satiety, 
then you don't really want it anymore. And a lot of times you're gonna forget that you actually wanted more. Once your teeth are clean and you feel fresh and you're checking email and you're relaxed, you really don't want anything more anyway. I hope those tips help let me know which of those help you the most. And if you're struggling with overeating, binge eating, or other bad eating habits, you can go to saneeaters.com and you can check out my free training that I put together for you. If you want to speak with me directly, there is a link in the description box below. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.